Hey, welcome to Family Man Racing, where the subscriptions are free. So today is an interesting day. I get a lot of questions about my um, setup with my uh, battery system. So I have an excess power 14 volt battery. This guy right here. And I charge it at around 15, 16 volts um, using a stock LS truck alternator, the 145 amp version, so the, the heavier duty guy. And what I do is there's an S line, which is like the sensing wire that you run to a 12 volt battery post or 14 volts in my case. And what that does is it, uh, you know, when everything heats up and there's more resistance, etc., the internal regulator will then kick up um, the output to maintain that 14 volts. Well, I need to charge at 15 to 16 volts. And so what I do is you put some diodes in line that kind of act like a resistor um, and the then less voltage gets to the um, alternator. And so then it tricks it into outputting more until it can get that voltage up because it's trying to see 14 volts. So most diodes cut about 0.6 uh, volts. So, you know, if it's normally charging at 13.8, 14, I need to get it up um, at least probably close to two volts. And so if you divide that by half, it's somewhere around uh, four diodes in line that you need. And so I was playing around yesterday just to see what it would look like. And I've been normally using a couple um, and it's around, you know, 15, 15 and a half at, uh, when it's all warmed up. Um, and so I just started stringing them together and different ratings do make a difference. So right now I have eight of them, anywhere between six and 10, uh, six and 15 amp reading. Um, the lower, the, the more they'll cut out. Um, so the 15 amp ones are, aren't really doing a whole heck of a lot. So that's why it has, that's why it's so long, but it's what I had. So I have eight of them now. And it gets um, around 16 to 16.4 volts at idle. Um, and that's even with a uh, Hoosier pulley, larger pulley, so I don't overspin the alternator as 8,000 RPM. So, um, but when you rev it up, it's still 16, 16 and a half volts, works pretty well. The next. The next uh, thing would be something way, way nicer. And so if you see this video, it's because it worked. And we're going with potentiometers. So they basically do the same thing, but it's adjustable. I don't exactly know what ohmage is going to work. Um, some research seems like some around two and a half ohms might be what I need. And so I have one, five, and then all the way up to uh, 100, which uh, is not gonna be needed. So it's probably gonna be one of these two is what's gonna work. This might only kick it up to 15 volts. This might get me way more than I need and I'll have to lock it down. Uh, they're a little smaller than I expected, but this whole thing off of Amazon was 10 bucks delivered. So it's at least worth the test. And if I have to get something more robust, not a lot of amperage goes through that sensing line. It's not a charging line. So this might be perfectly fine. So I'm gonna work on figuring out how I'm supposed to work to wire this up and then we'll report back. All right, it's super loud, so check it out. It's dead. 14. And if I turn it up, this is a 50K one, which is apparently overkill. Knocks it down all the way to two volts. Um, the alternator won't try to make up that difference. So 
um, the re the internal regulator just ends up like shutting off and just keeps it at battery voltage. So I'm gonna play around with it. That's a, oh, 10K one. I don't know why I said 50. So I'm gonna knock it back down to five and try that, or maybe I end up back at the one again. When I was playing around here without the car running, it didn't seem like the one was gonna work, but I also didn't have it set up well. The connections were crap. So this is a little test session here. And then what I'm thinking is, is I do it up right and maybe put that dial somewhere in here. I don't know why I would need adjustability, but maybe I could. And then dodge the mess, but they have cool little plastic knobs, all the stuff to mount these. So, I mean, pretty crazy that Good old China ships this stuff for 10 bucks. Um, and again, like I said, I may get something more robust after I, after I test and figure out which specific one is the one to do. But dude, this is awesome. I say dudes, I should, cause it's all guys. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to put some of the little more, um, information here at the ends, likely once we kind of vet this all out, um, but you're along for the ride right now. And I really think this is, you know, something that could help, um, anybody that has, that wants to bump up their, uh, voltage a little bit. All right. Methanol got me crying. I was so excited. So there you go, boys. If you want an adjustable external switch for your internal regulator of an LS alternator, and honestly, it should work for any other alternator that has a sensing line that is external from the alternator that goes to a positive uh, fuse box or battery terminal, you put this in in between and the way I did it, and I don't think it really matters though, is I went from the battery post to the middle and then from the left to the alternator and that just wraps around. Of course, we'll clean that all up, but I mean, there you have it. You can do eight diodes <laughs> to get 16 volts or you can do a little like one dollar potentiometer and get the same thing so um hope you enjoyed comment if you have any other questions i'll do my best i honestly ha have very little understanding of how any of this crap works um, but it does so that's all you need too so just got the dial right here and uh if i need to tweak for some reason i really haven't needed to but uh there you go pretty nifty 
All right, so I wanted to give an update on this potentiometer uh, experiment, I guess I should say. And um, I put some clips in before. We've been driving it around. I probably have uh, a few hundred miles on it, waiting for some parts, so not too many miles and races right now. But it's been working flawlessly, so no problem whatsoever. Um, we're actually gonna do the same thing to my son's car. Uh, his is a 4G63 swap 3000 GT. If you haven't checked out the videos, we have like a full build series on it and a rebuild series from uh, when there was an accident with it and uh, we had to freshen it up. So. Uh, always had a problem with it though, it has a 3000 GT alternator adapted and for some reason couldn't get the wiring to, to work right and so he would always have to rev up the car first to get it to excite and then um, because it didn't really have a sensing wire that I could tell, the voltage when warm was never as good as we wanted. So long story short, what we're going to do is use a Saturn SC2 uh, alternator uh, which will adapt to a 4G63 with just a little bit of work. And they have a four wire sensing, uh, four wire alternator, just like an LS. So one will go to a dummy light, one could go to uh, 12 volts on, one you're not used at all, and then one back to the fuse box or battery uh, for sensing. So doing, doing the same thing and have a Come on. Well, trust me, it's a one uh, ohm one, which testing on my car took it up to about 15.8 volts, which will be more than he needs. Uh, and just straight to the battery might work well to get, you know, 14 volts. But just in case, we're gonna have him a, a little dial of voltage on there. So that will be the next one we try, but at this point, I would say works well. Um, and I haven't even upgraded to a little heavier one, just using the same one I had. The wires don't get warm, the potentiometer doesn't get warm, and it's been some warm days outside when I was driving, about uh, 90, 95 degrees outside air temps. So it's worth a shot. Thought it'd be worth it uh, for you guys to try on your cars. Mm -hmm.